right, Tim, I've been wanting to get to this one, I'll tell you. Uh, but I wanted to get this pinholing one that I did a little while ago out of the way. <clears throat> but, uh, um, and another thing I want to say about these videos and stuff like that. I don't want the fact that I do video to discourage you guys from participating in writing, okay? We're doing this as an enhancement here, so don't be discouraged. And when you're ready to participate, let me know and I'll hook you up. I'll help you out. But now, Tim, <clears throat> I'm going to come in at this point where you say, Frank, yes, this is a great dis discussion. Just when I think I understand it, I don't. Haha. <laughs> yep. It comes and goes and comes and goes. And, uh, but it's a beautiful thing when you start uh, to, to analyze what's going on at this level. Where, where you know where you're where you're actually dissecting distortion and all that so precisely that all of these little things matter now. It's really a neat thing. So when you talk so when you talk about plate slur and slippage, this is only on a geared press, correct? Almost. Here's the thing. Yes, on a on a geared press, that is true. On a servo press, it will still be true if the settings on the servo press take uh, uh, factor in the assumption that there is no overimpression condition and that the, print, the actual print diameter is not greater than it actually is. And on servo press, if it assumes that the diameter is that normal diameter, then it's going to do the same thing on a gear press. It's going to lock in at that rotation. However, now, and now, I don't know the specifics. I haven't personally run a servo press and tweaked it, and, and, but I know that, you know, those things make 100,000 calculations per rotation and all this stuff, so they're very precise. I, I would imagine that you could do some very precise adjusting. Uh, if the case is that you can adjust that servo precisely enough to compensate for that 0 0.026 uh, uh, excess in your diameter, then I would try what you're thinking. I would measure the tape, measure everything, come up with what that final diameter is, and I would distort to that so that your images do indeed become evenly distributed about that cylinder. Then when you take your uh, servo settings and dial it in for that, you've got the two things uh, accomplished. You've got an equal distribution of your images about that cylinder, and you've got the rotation of the, the or the speed of the plate, hopefully traveling at the same speed of the substrate. Now, your repeat length is just going to be a little bit greater. And by how much? Well, here's the beauty of it. Uh, uh, we, we can take that 0 0.026 amount. Is that the amount you have? I think it's 0 0.026 you were saying. Yeah, 0 0.026. <clears throat> All we have to do is multiply. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's how much the diameter is too much by. Multiply that by pi, and that tells you how much, the, uh, how much of, a, of, a, of a, too much of a circumference we have. So let's try that. 0 0.026 times... 3.1416 equals 0.026. So that 0 0.026 inches that you have too much diameter of, you multiply that by pi, and I like to express it this way, and that comes up to 0 0.082, oops, 82 inches to uh, three decimal places, right? So that's how much you have to distribute around that, that, that cylinder there. But that, that just gives you an idea of how much excess circumference you have there, okay? Uh, 82 thousandths of an inch. But yeah, try that out. Tweak, out. tweak that out, dial it in, and give it a shot. That's what I would do. I would do.